It is the Riot Podcast, the Thursday, August 17th edition. Today, Isaiah, I have a list here of the most popular cities that people want to move to in the United States, according to Redfin anyways. And uh, before you look at it, I want to know which cities would you move to? If I had to choose. Yeah, we'll see if they're on the cities. list. Uh huh. I would consider living in Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay. I've lived there before. Believe, like it, or, Indi- believe it or not, not on the list. No, I was nah, hoping you say it would. One of the top 10. No. I wouldn't think not it'd a be lot on of people the- clamoring yeah. to move to Indy. That makes sense. I have a lot of friends there from college. I went to school there. So it would be an easy move for me. Okay. I also would consider Cleveland, Ohio. Not going to be on the list. Yeah, definitely not. That might be on the list of top 10 cities people aren't moving people to. People move away from. Yeah, I think so. It is. I, we, uh, we learned recently, I don't know if you remember this, that not only is has Cleveland got one of the downtowns that's losing the most like traction, people are going downtown less and less since COVID in Cleveland. It's one of the worst cities in the United States for that, but also one of the most depressed cities, the most stressed cities in the United States. Well, they need me there to yeah, brighten it all up. Give them some sunshine. But at the same time, they have the Browns. Mm-hmm. They've got the Guardians. They've got the Cavs. Yeah, no, I could no find, wonder they're so depressed. <laughs> I could find lots of things to do in Cleveland year-round. I would be able to have season tickets to any of those three uh-huh. and be able to have things going on. Sure. Um, but if I had to pick more of a like tropical place, not even tropical, yeah. just more of a vacation spot uh-huh. that I think is more likely to be on the list, and I've talked about this before on the show, I'm a big fan. Like one of my favorite vacation spots of all time mm-hmm. is Phoenix slash Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah. So if I were to get more warm, that's where I would go. That's on the list. And not only is it on the list, it's number two. It's a good spot. Which is a mystery to me because I understand I'm looking at the list. All of the, the cities on the list are in warmer climates. They're all decidedly like the in the south. But... Uh, the difference between Phoenix, Arizona, and many of the other cities on the list here is that the other cities have redeeming qualities. And I don't know, Phoenix, it's warm, but it's like potentially too warm. And what is what are the positives of Phoenix? I just have never figured that out. It's so. a fun place, man. It's a go-to spot. It's the, a popping spot. I'll tell you which places... I, I think it'd be unfair for me to choose any place on the list uh, or just wrong to choose any place on the list. I haven't even at least visited True. before. So although I really think I would thrive in Southern California, maybe in Los Angeles or San Diego, I've never been there. Um, it seems like a cool spot for me. And I know the complaints are, uh, you know, it's expensive. Well, it's expensive because it's cool because lots of people want to be there. Super busy. Yeah. But because again, a lot of people want to be there, a lot of stuff to do. So that would be a great weather. That would be a place that, that I've not been to that I would consider. But places that I have been to, uh, I really like Boston. I know that there's bad areas of Boston. There's good areas of Boston. I'd like to live in a good area of Boston. Fair enough. I've never. I, I've been to Boston one time. And? I barely remembered. And then... I played the cross game there. I also have the benefit of seeing the list here, but I agree with... America in a, as a whole, and I would say Miami would be one of the top cities I would really consider. If you just said, Hudson, you can move anywhere, don't worry about the cost, don't worry about anything else, like just pick a spot in the U.S. It'd be hard to not choose Miami. It'd be definitely, Miami is a cool spot. Yeah. Popping spot. It is definitely one of the best, and that actually was number one on the list. Phoenix was number two, Las Vegas, Sacramento. That makes sense to you? Never been to Sacramento. Sacramento is confusing to me. I don't feel like I get the vibes that, I mean, don't they call it Cowtown? I don't know. I don't feel like it's. I've never been there, but if it's a number four. Yeah, I must. I mean, lots of people are, this is based off of Redfin search data where people are searching for new homes. Uh, so that was number four. And then Tampa was number five. Dang, of the top 10, Uh huh. I have visited seven. Nice. Of the top 10 places that people want to move to, and they're okay. Some of them are I wouldn't move to. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't move to Las Vegas. It sounds craziness. One of my good friends from college lives like 20 minutes from Las Vegas. It's where she grew up. Yeah. And she's like, you don't even like, she just said you don't get the fun. Like when you go there on vacation, it's all fun. Yeah. But if you're like a regular person who lives there, 
you would never want to go down there. Yeah. Because it's just so hectic and crazy. Everyone down there is having on like vacation. Uh-huh. If you're like doing your normal Tuesday and there's people out on the strip of Las Vegas just going crazy, like, that's not going to be fun for you. No. You're like the sober person at a drunk party. Like that's not going to be a good time for you. You're just going to be annoyed. Yeah. I, uh, I would live in Las Vegas if given the chance, but it wouldn't be. That does feel way more like a vacation destination than a place to just to, to put down some roots and spend yeah. a lot of time long term. Um, I don't know. The other places I think too are like, I don't know if I spent enough time in like Charleston, South Carolina or something like that to really know if I'd like it there, but I feel like I would. No, Charleston. Yeah. Like a city is not too big. It's in a good area. It might be a little humid, but you know, I'm near the a medium sizer. Yeah. Like Raleigh. Possibly, possibly, but I'd like to be closer to the ocean if I could. So there you have it. The top five cities that people want to move to in the United States, according to Redfin and, and Isaiah and I's top uh, list as well. We got a good show for you today. Some good talk about uh, the most popular video game or the highest rated video games of our lifetimes. Also, how to get a conversation started on Hinge. We give you great advice. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we'll catch you next time. See you guys. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. We're talking Steve Carell useless knowledge today because yesterday was his birthday. And so I asked the crowd where he attended college, where he attended university. Yeah. And we got some texts in. Okay. Have you looked at the text? No. Good, because we have some correct answers in the text. Uh Uh-oh. Stephanie. Correct. Rod. Correct as well. Nice. My mom texted me. Also correct. So people just know this. Yes, people know this. So let's see if you also can get it right. All right. I don't know how I would possibly know this, but I'll tell you that for whatever reason, one school instantly jumped to mind, and that school is Michigan State. Good guess. What? (laughs) Unfortunately, incorrect. This one was for our Radio U Columbus folk. Okay. It's a small school called Denison University. Oh, I've seen on, that. On the east side of Columbus in yeah. Granville, Ohio, which was right over where, near where I grew up. Uh-huh. Um, and so I, that's well-known knowledge you where think, I'm from. You think he's the most famous alumnus? From alum- Denison? Yeah. I would probably say yes. Yeah, I think that's probably a safe bet. <laughs> There's not a lot more uh, household names that are bigger than, than Steve Carell. Does he I ever think. come back? I don't know. Do like events? It's not like it's literally like you 10 think, minutes away from where I grew up. You so. think at some point I've he'd have to I've never heard do him that. like Steve Carell coming to the Denison. East Side of Columbus. He'd have to do like a commencement at some time, right? Yeah, you'd have to think so. Or maybe even he's too big. All right, let's do more. Let's do some more Steve Carell rapid fire. What odd instrument is Carell well known for playing? Do you play this in like any movies or anything? I'm not sure. I've never even heard of this instrument. <laughs> So it's probably not saxophone then. No. Wait for it. Here it comes. Hey, we have some perfect drops. For I know, right? Today. Uh, the instrument I'm looking for was the fife. Oh, okay. Uh, next question. What is Brick Tamlin, which is the character that Steve Crow plays in Anchorman? Yeah. His girlfriend's name in Anchorman 2. Oh. I know who plays her, but... Uh... I don't know, Stacy. No! No! Her name was Chani. Ch- <laughs> Next, yeah. in Horton Hears a Who, Steve Carell was cast alongside Isla Fisher. Uh-huh. What movie did Isla Fisher star as one of their protagonists in the role of a character named Beans? <laughs> Wedding Crashers. <laughs> It's the only movie I can think of with her in it. The answer I was looking for there was Rango. <laughs> <laughs> what familiar Steve Carell character have I mentioned many a times on the show yeah. as a character that I myself could voice over? Uh, it's the squirrel from Over the Hedge. Hammy. The yeah, squirrel Hammy. from Over Got the Hedge. It. Yep. And the final qu- unrecognizable question. Unrecognizable in that role, by the way. Yeah, of course. He is like in almost every role. He's unrecognizable in this one as well. Corella is also the voice of Gru in Despicable oh, Me. Oh, yeah, of course. Who is Gru's assistant in the movies? Dr. Something. Oh, man. I don't know. 
Um, Blaverston. I was looking for Dr. Nefario. Oh, yeah, that's a good name. You were pretty close with Blaverston. Yeah, I was, I was on the right track. Well, that's oh, your Steve Carell useless knowledge for the day. Useless knowledge. That feels a little more useful than many others. Didn't that feel pretty pretty good? Yeah, I think so. Hammy the Squirrel, Chani, the Fife, Denison. There could be somebody Rango. at Denison listening right now that's really proud. Yeah, it's a big day. Yeah, big, big day. Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com Isaiah, uh, you haven't seen the Barbie movie yet, have you? I have not. Still haven't seen it, but surely you've seen the iconic scene from the movie where Barbie, played by Margot Robbie, uh, walks out of her shoes and her feet stay all like, you know, they still look like they're in high heels. Yeah, Yeah, pointy. Um, And then there's the scene where she's like, I have flat feet. Um, it's, It's been a... It's been a meme. It's been... People have done the Barbie foot challenge on TikTok. People are obsessed with Barbie slash Margot Robbie's feet. And now... It seems that someone is trying to capitalize on that specifically. I have a woman here who is the creator of a foot website. I don't even want to give out the name of the foot website because one, I'm not going to search it here at work and see what's actually on there. And two, this is just a a, a blatant, a blatant ploy for attention from this website. But Nevertheless, this foot website creator has offered to make content with Margot Robbie herself because people are so, so obsessed with her feet. This woman has offered to pay Margot Robbie what would amount to a signing bonus of about $318,000 to just do some uh, foot content, to do, to just take some pictures of her feet. That she could post up on this platform. Can you believe that? That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. How much was it again? It would amount to... This is... Uh, it's She's from the UK. But this would convert to about 318,000 American dollars. Not enough. Not enough? If you got offered that, you wouldn't take well, pictures of your feet? It's different if I get offered that. Yeah. Like, if you offered me that, uh, obviously that's a lot. Margot Robbie, her net worth is like sixty million. Yeah, you oh, think that's a lot to her? She's supposed to make, I don't know if you've seen this, fifty million just based off of the Barbie movie alone. So her net worth is about to go to one hundred and ten million. Yeah, I don't know if it works you that way, but sure. I'm sure it's something like that. <laughs> Either way, you think that that's a lot of money to her? That's pocket change. Yeah, she could go sign like six autographs to make that much. She could. But this creator of the foot website says that this is passive income. You do this photo shoot one time, and these pictures live on forever. That's the exact (laughs) opposite of what you want to hear about pictures. (laughs) Yeah, people will be looking at your feet forever till the end of time. Yeah, that's not the argument you want to make. You want to be like, these will probably dissipate in like the next couple of years. People stop Googling it. Don't worry. Not this will be around forever for people to see for the rest of your lives. So your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren can find your feet on this website. Is it embarrassing to have feet pics out there, though? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. No. So maybe that, I but mean. But also, if you were going to give me, if you were going to give me, like, 20 bucks to do it. Yeah. I would be like, no. I would, I'd take 20 bucks. You would probably. take 20 bucks. Yeah, but people probably because pay me. Because then, and then the workers here at Radio U would be like, you're on Whatever it is, foot yeah. finder. Foot finder. Is that what you're on? Weird with feet? Yeah, but I'd be like, and you're like, yeah, I'm I did 20 it for twenty bucks. bucks. Was it worth it? Uh-huh. No. You got like two orders at Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. That's not worth. I don't the see the downside for me. I don't see the downside, but no, people probably pay me to keep my shoes on. You know. You know, one wants to see that. Yeah, nobody does want to see yeah, that. All right, not well, from you. Yeah. Margot Robbie, different. We can't all be as lucky as her. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio U. How do you feel about self-checkouts, Isaiah? 
Oh, I'm down with a self-checkout. You're a self-checkout fan. I'm a self-checkout E. Che self-checkout E. Self-checkout er. If Could be. If you're a self-checkout E, that means you would be the one doing the self-checking out, right? Yeah. I don't know. Um, well, I've got bad news for you. If you're a self-checkout aficionado, Trader Joe's has declared the popular grocery chain that under no circumstances will they be ever be putting in self-checkouts. At least as far as their new CEO and president, John Bassalone, is concerned. He says, no way, no how. What's his reasoning? His reasoning, as he explained on a Trader Joe's podcast, which is a thing, he says that they would never put in self-checkouts because we believe in people and we're not trying to get rid of our crew members for efficiency's sake or whatever. I don't know what the reasons are people put in self-checkouts. Fair enough. He also said that... He recently had trouble operating a self-checkout at a different store and had to call over an employee to assist him. He says, I do this for a living and I can't even get this thing to work. It is the worst when you have to get one of the employees to come to you yeah. at the self-checkout mm -hmm. because you could be waiting there anywhere from 30 seconds to 10 minutes. That's true. They Because they could be... This is one thing that drives me nuts about grocery stores with the self-checkouts is they'll have... At least at the Kroger's I go to, they'll have the self checkout like section on one end of the store, and then all of the regular checkouts that nobody is at, and then the other self checkouts all the way at the other end of the store, which and, makes no sense. And for some reason, there's like one person for all of them. Yeah. And then there's one person for all of the regular for the w regular checkouts that has to deal with the person who has like a million things to check out. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And you think they would just put them all together? Like, it's not like you don't walk the entire store uh -huh. to shop. Like, you're going to go from the fruits all the way to the frozens anyway across the entire mm -hmm. store. So why can't they watch 30, 30 more feet to put all the self-checkouts together yeah, so we could it. have one or two people just monitoring the whole place mm -hmm. rather than having one person going back and forth and then you're waiting forever because your thing won't scan, yep. and it's not letting you pay, and then you're standing there backing up the line. I had one the other day. I felt like such an idiot, even though I did really nothing wrong. Is It was one of the self-checkouts that has the belt, which I do prefer. I think that's the oh, right way. Oh, I've never way. used the belt. That's, uh, that, that's too uh, intimidating for me. That's the ideal way, because then you just run all your stuff down to the end. You don't have to worry about getting piled up. If you have a few too many things for the little carousel, it all runs down to the end, then you go bag it up. But... On the belt, I didn't even realize this. They have like a scanner that, like after you scan it, the belt starts moving and it tells you, and then it like senses if something goes by the thing you just scanned. And I was just, I held the thing because the other guy was still down there at the end of the, you know, he was still bagging up his stuff. So I was like, I don't want to get it mixed up. But then that set off this whole chain of events where the machine wasn't smart enough to realize that even if I put the thing on the belt after a few seconds, it was just, and I had to call the lady over like three times and I didn't do anything. It wrong, sounds like right? you did do a lot of things. How wrong. was I supposed to know? What do you want me to mix up the groceries with the other guy? Exactly. This is why self checkout. No go. Apparently it's, for Trader it's not Joe's all cracked up. Yeah. That's why you don't use the belt. If you can't, if you can't <laughs> handle the belt, <laughs> Then you don't use the belt. You I can can't handle the belt. You the can't handle the belt. I can handle the belt. The belt couldn't handle me. No, you cannot handle the belt. It's I, obvious. I, uh, I, it's, it's frustrating, although partially because they're usually the only things open, but I always find myself drawn towards the self-checkout. But really, it's not that bad talking to a person. I don't mind the regular ones if they're open. If I have enough things, a lot of times I shop, I shop for myself, mm -hmm. so I don't have enough things to really... Go to a regular yeah. checkout, but if I have enough things, I'll go to the regular checkout. And you feel real goofy going to the regular checkout with just like three, three things. things. Yeah. yeah. They're like, why didn't you go to the self checkout? The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to the riot on Radio U. Ego Nog last year. I vaguely remember that. Yeah. I, we didn't try it. It was, uh, Ego teamed up with a distilling company for alcoholic eggnog, spiked eggnog that so was Ego flavored. 
Instead of eggnog, it was mm. eggonog. Yeah, clever, right? Yeah, I guess so. And apparently that went well enough that they are teaming up with the very same distilling company, Sugarlands Distilling Company, for round two of a alcoholic ego collab. They have this, that down in Gatlinburg. They have it? Yeah, Sugarlands Sugar Lands Distilling? Yeah. I think I ate there. Did I you? I think that's one of the places I went. Um, they have a I, little patio in the back and whatnot. Yeah, really nice. It's a nice, cool little place. Nice place. Um, they are teaming up for what they call Ego Brunch in a Jar Sippin' Cream. Little sipping cream, huh? Yeah. What is sipping cream? Have you heard of that? Yeah, it's like an alcoholic beverage. Oh. It's like well. a thick alcoholic beverage. You can put it in, like, a lot of people put it in, like, a hot chocolate uh-huh. or a coffee. And, uh, yeah. Or maybe in this case, you could put it all over your waffles and... You're not putting it on waffles. Why not? It makes no sense. Because it's alcoholic? Would you pour milk on it? Would you pour milk on your waffles? Uh, I wouldn't pour milk. Is it that thin? What? Yes. This is that thin? I would... I just said people put it in hot chocolate. Yeah. I wouldn't put it in... uh, I wouldn't put it on waffles. Milk on waffles. But I'll tell you what I would do is some of my family, they'd make up this thick... It'd be like a vanilla, kind of like a, a sweet... Almost like a sweet gravy consistency is what I would, would call it. It's like this sweet vanilla sauce that we put on pancakes and waffles. It's pretty good. That's what I picture this is. No, this is it's, like milk. It's thinner than that? It's like milk. I think it's still, if you wanted to to, no, if the, you wanted to spike your waffles. <laughs> you wouldn't do it that way. You would, you, you, instead of doing that, yeah. you would just make the waffles with it. Oh, okay, okay, sure. And so, like, you would just replace the milk yeah. that you would put in the waffles uh-huh. with this. And then the alcohol would cook out, so it'd be fine. Yeah. Uh, to start your day. They say that their newest collaboration combines the flavor of toasted egos covered in sweet maple syrup with rich butter and hints which is in quotation marks for some reason, of smoky bacon. Interesting flavor. Yeah, so that that would be quite, I'd have to imagine, very odd to drink straight up. Ego waffles, maple syrup, butter, bacon, oh no, yeah, booze. All in one sip. Yeah, I don't know what you would put that in. I think, I think it really feels like it's for cooking, doesn't it? No, not cooking. What would you do with it? You put it in your coffee? I think probably in a coffee. Yeah. That's an aggressive way to start your day, I'll tell you that. Well, uh, they are going to have this. You can buy it online no matter where you are from Reserve Bar. You could also find it in select Kroger, Fries, Total Wine, and Hy-Vee retailers coming soon. And it will be available in time for the holidays. Oh, because this is a must-have, clearly. I, I don't know. It feels like... Uh, this doesn't feel very holiday No, I feel... You could just... You're saying this is an everyday alcoholic beverage. No, I don't just think one, this is... Whatever, this is for me in whenever general. Whenever the mood strikes. Whenever you need a little extra to give it, kick up your morning. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. Got a woman here... That is causing controversy in her neighborhood because she gets up routinely at 5 a.m. and goes for a run around town. The problem is, in her neighborhood, a lot of people have motion sensor lights, pretty common. A lot of people have dogs. And so her run at 5 a.m., is triggering the lights, awakening the dogs, and getting pe- and getting the dogs up barking and waking people up at 5 a.m. every morning. Who's right? Is she is she fair to continue going on her runs? Are her neighbors fair to be upset? You be the judge. This is a tough one. Tough, eh? I think that it is within her right to go on her morning run. Yeah. And I have no issues with her doing that. Okay. So you think the neighbors are just being being grumps? I think it's, I mean, it's not her fault. Like, what is she, what do they want her to do? Just stop going for her morning runs? Stop uh, exercising? It says, let's see. I mean, obviously that's what they want. Yeah. <laughs> that's the question here. 
is they, they want her to stop, they, and she says no. Yeah, I don't think they really care what her alternative is, but she there needs to be an alternative because she can't keep running and waking them up, even though, I mean, it's not a crime, for sure. It's absolutely legal. I see people running doing. every morning when I drive in here. Yeah. I pass people running every day. Multiple people uh -huh. running around. It's com it's a common thing. It's not like nobody runs at 5 a.m. It's not like this is the first person to ever do this. Turn off your motion sensor lights. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Close your blinds. Uh huh. Don't let your dog put, see it. Put your dog in a different room. Um, Maybe yeah, train I your dog. My dog doesn't bark. My dog doesn't bark when that stuff goes off. Mm-hmm. I'll tell fault. you what, my dog, uh, she barks day and night if somebody's out there, but when it's bedtime, it's bedtime. Exactly. That's how Jim is. He she knows when he to move at all. Yeah. I, I, I just, I don't really know. I don't know what good advice I can give to the people who are being um, woken up. I never know. I've woken up, awakened uh, when they don't want to be her neighbors. I don't know what kind of advice to give them because I don't know exactly what you can change about your routine that's going to make this, you know, less disturbing. But I'm, I know I can't say anything to the woman running at 5 a.m. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not her problem if your lights and dogs start going off. Yeah, it's not her fault whatsoever. I don't even know what the, what the counterpoint would be. I don't even know if you had to make an argument. Well, I, I well would, I'm not ready to wake up yet. I would love to know what, because they, they say there's a big debate going on. People are complaining in the, the community's Facebook group and stuff, which they love to do. But, like, what is, their, what is their argument for why she shouldn't be allowed to do this, besides that it's waking you up? Yeah, there's, there isn't one. There is literally not, none. Yeah. What authorities would you like to report her to? She woke me up because my dog started barking. Yeah. Yet again, like, close the blinds. I don't understand. How is your dog so alert at 5 o'clock in the morning yeah. that it's barking at someone running down the street? And Get him away from the if, windows. If your motion sensor light is waking you up, then you shouldn't have a motion sensor light. Turn it off. Yeah. If it's causing, like, literally life-changing, they want her whole, her whole morning routine to be different, turn your motion sensor light off. Get your dog away from the window. Mm-hmm. Close the blinds. Emily says, sounds like the neighbors need a hobby. It does. Yeah. Maybe they, they should join her. They, that's right. If you're, getting wake, uh, uh, if you're waking up at that time anyways, might as well just get out there and make the most of your, make the most of your morning. Shed some pounds, baby. Uh-huh. Get it's a little a good job use. going. Yeah, I think they see a complaint. I see an opportunity. I see motivation. Disinformation. Mispronunciations. Bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. I think this is, I believe this is a phrase I've coined, and that is there are two types of people in this world. I think I came up with that. Winners and losers, baby. Yeah, but it turns out I was actually all wrong. There's more than two kinds of people in this world, believe it or not. In fact, there are three. Three types of people. Three types of men. In this world. Well, there's th uh, three types of men or three types of people? Three types of men. Okay. Yeah, for women, I don't know. But there's three types of men, and this is according to a study from the University of British Columbia in Canada, where they did a bunch of interviews with a bunch of men to try to figure out the different kinds of styles of masculinity. And what they really found was there's three different versions of masculinity that men can fall into pretty much. And so I'm going to I'll rattle these off to you. You see which one you are. You ready? Oh, I'm so excited. This is how it, like basically this relates to your relationship with the women in your life. Okay, got it, got it, All got right. it. So number one, neo-traditionalists. If you're a neo-traditionalist, you're a man who largely follows tradi traditional gender roles, such as being the provider and protector in the relationship. That's Got it. That's one option. Two, egalitarian. Men who seek a more equal partnership with a particular emphasis on mutual mutual mutuality. Mutuality. And measurable give and take. Is there like an easier definition for that one? Um... I don't know. I feel like that one's the in-between one. 
You because know, a little give and take. Yeah, instead you of being like... You do some things, old, I do some things. Yeah, unless being like old school, I'm the man of the house, I go to work, and you cook and clean or whatever. That'd be like real old school. That's neo-traditionalist, That'd huh? be neo-traditionalist, probably. Um, and then egalitarian is somewhere in between. I do where, some things, you do some things. Yeah, where but then there's progressive, the third type of men... Those are men who work on building gender equity in their partnership through regular, purposeful conversations with their partner to adjust who does what. So it sounds like egalitarian. Uh, that's when like we both have jobs that are set. Yeah. And then progressive is when what? We have rotating jobs. We both I, are doing things and it kind of just switches around. Purposeful uh, conversations. Based off of the, that, like, I understand neo-traditionalist and egalitarian. I guess I don't understand really where they draw the line of, like, what is, what is purposeful conversations with their partner to adjust who does what? What does that mean? How is that different from egalitarian? Maybe it's more empowering. Buzzword. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, what, what would you consider yourself? Is there one where it's like the woman is the provider and protector? What's that one called? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I that sounds like you would that would be progressive. But progressive, got it. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. You might. That might even be. You might even be ahead of the curve. Maybe I'm. You might be so a, progressive. Wow. Yeah. Maybe where she's the provider, uh -huh. and I would consider myself the receiver. The provide e. The provide e. Yeah, the one yeah. Who, who gets to hang out. I like that role. Yeah. Have I got to do it yet? Not yet. I haven't been provided for. Provi but I wouldn't be against it. You're definitely not a neo-traditionalist if you want the woman to be the provider. No, I'm definitely not that. No, I prefer I prefer them to make more money than me. I think that sounds great. Uh -huh. I think that sounds preferred, actually. And you can actually. cook and clean, too? or well, I mean, I, I can. I uh -huh. can clean. I'm like a decent cook. I can do some of that, too. I probably land somewhere in the middle. I like when everybody has jobs. Yeah. Different things that they're in charge Egalitarian. of. Egalitarian. It seems fair. I'm good at some things. They're good at some things. Uh -huh. You can figure it out. Yeah, we just figure it. I think that's, uh, we're both I'm not a big dishes guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm more of like a take out the trash. I'm not very good at laundry. Well, that sounds pretty neo-traditional. No, that's not, that does not. <laughs> it does. No, it doesn't. I'm just not. There's certain things that I'm not How good at. How many country at. songs I'm are there about, about here. the husband not wanting to take out the I'm trash? I'm good. I'm good. I can run the vacuum. <laughs> so that's my thing. I can take out the trash. That's yeah. what I bring to the table. Okay. And then you just bring in like a six-figure salary. That sounds great. Uh-huh. And then I'll, uh, I'll be, I don't know. I also have a dog. Peabod. Is that, is, that a, is that a bonus? You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The Worst of the Riot. Radio U. Here we go with Choice Champions. We have a subject, a topic where Isaiah and I take turns. We do snake draft style drafting our preferred choices in said topic. And then it's up to you to decide which one of us chose a better squad and let us know any that we missed taking our subject for this week. It makes a lot of sense. It's a big time for back to school. And so we're going to do top school subjects, the best classes, the best classes in school. I have the number one pick. Would you say, would you say I'm at a disadvantage because I was homeschooled? Huge disadvantage. You think that's a huge disadvantage? Yeah, it's a huge disadvantage. Because I think two of the ones that I'm going to pick here, uh, you wouldn't even consider. You wouldn't even, I wouldn't even know about them? Maybe. All right. Well, Possibly. We'll, we'll see. I think uh, going with the number one pick, I think it's obvious that the number one pick is P.E. You're going with Jim. Jim. It's a good I, choice. I know there's many out there that don't enjoy gym. I've seen TV shows. I've seen all the sitcoms where kids don't have a good time in gym. But for me, even though I'm not the most athletic, I had a good time. I like it. Gym's a good, that's a good number one overall good, pick. Good number one choice. Yeah, for sure. It's always going to be a solid pick. Uh, gym was one of my favorite classes, of course, when I was in uh, middle school, high school, any age. Uh, for me, I'm putting together just uh, just a laundry list of just what you need for success here. Oh, you're doing success. I'm just doing fun. I'm doing fun and success. Oh, I'm telling okay. you, this is all you have to do. If you can complete these three, then you're good. Uh -huh. At the number two overall pick, I'm taking study hall. Study hall, huh? There was nothing better when I was in high school, middle school, 
than having study hall because it's literally a 45 minute period uh-huh. where you're just sitting in a room on your phone. Yeah. Maybe you're catching up on homework. There were semesters when I had two study halls. I had spent like an hour and a half of my day just hanging out with my friends, talking <laughs> in the cafeteria because that's where we had study hall. Study it hall feels a little bit like a cheat code in this. Oh, draft. study hall was fantastic. Uh, the next one I'm taking is any kind of communication class. Communications, huh? And the reason I'm taking a communication class, I was a communication major. Of course. And I think it's the only real skill you need. If you can communicate, yeah. that's all that matters. It's a good choice. Yeah, you can like read body language, be able to have a conversation back and forth. I think it's one of the most important skills. Uh-huh. I don't think in real life you really need math that much. No. I don't think you need science that much. But being able to talk as a radio personality, I think is an important science. function. Science is a big waste to me. Yeah, I can't. I'm, I was, I'm terrible at it. If too. we were going to do, and this would be fun to do too, the worst subjects in school, biology would be on my list. Yeah, it'd be a big one for me. Uh, now I get the the next two picks, and this one, it, this is not a, a, a skill, a class that you need really for any walk of life. I don't even know why they really teach it in school, but I like geography. Geography. Geography, the number four pick. That's a good pick. I liked geography. And so I will take that, even though yet again, uh, I mean, I still, in my own interest, it still applies. But like, could I live my life without knowing where Antigua and Barbuda are? Probably. Probably. That's still a cool, co- cool class. Yeah. And then uh, last one. This is a tough call. I guess I will say uh, g- government. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna crush you. I don't know. I I, I did not. I had two my two top picks, and then I don't know what to choose for the last one. Government. I'm still interested in. It's still. It's yeah, still. Yeah, I like yeah. government. I took government. It's a knowing good class. All, knowing all the different branches, judicial, executive. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh, it's important that that's an yeah. important one that you uh-huh. can use in your real life if yeah. you want to have really awkward conversations. Uh huh. I think that's a good one. Yeah, I think it's helped me. I bet it has. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with my final pick, I'm going to go just overpower my whole list, and I'm uh-huh. going to go any AP or dual credit classes. Oh, yeah. that's Because yeah. when you're in high school, I, you, there's literally no other classes that you need to take that'll matter. If you want to go to college, those are overpowered. Yeah. I, I graduated early just because I took some dual credit classes. And, so I think you should uh, prioritize those. If you're a freshman going into high school, uh-huh. just get, t- get as many of those as you can before you go to school. You'll save a bunch of money. Look at you now. Disinformation, mispronunciations, bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. Choice champions, the subject today, since we're going back to school around this time, is best subjects in school, best classes in school. I went with PE, geography, government. Isaiah went with study hall, communication. Uh Uh-huh. AP classes. Yeah. Dual credit. I think uh, I think study hall particularly feels like it shouldn't count. But what? nevertheless. Study hall nevertheless, is a class. Nevertheless. I really, I was going, I know we said class. I was feeling subjects though. But you know I what think Rachel said? She spirit. said I'm voting for Isaiah's team solely for study hall. Well, exactly. Which means if you discount that, then you don't actually win. Well, then she uh, said none of Hudson's picks are what I would describe as fun. Uh, ben, <laughs> ben said, I can't believe neither of you chose band or choir band would be good that's a good choice i was never in band uh-huh. but i was in choir and i i enjoyed uh, see, choir. i would be caught dead in choir hey choir was fun i i can't be in a choir i've got to be a solo act oh okay yeah i need to have the spotlight shine on me i liked i liked choir i did choir through middle school i did nice i did a little show choir i was up there dancing <laughs> believe it or yeah. not and uh, so i was a big it. fan of the uh of the choir we days. believe it jessica texted in Isaiah is the overwhelmingly obvious choice. All right, we don't have to be hurtful, Jessica. She said, what? I was the... The overwhelmingly obvious choice. One more time for me. The overwhelmingly (laughs) obvious choice. But I respect homeschooling because it allows a unique perspective for kids. You do have a pretty unique perspective. That's not a good... Yeah. Special little guy. That doesn't make me feel better, (laughs) Jessica. So we can... Discount that vote as well. And after tallying them up, oh, it looks like I still won. Oh, oddly enough. Somehow. Rachel said she's upset that uh, neither of us picked art class. Art class? Yeah, art. Yeah, not much. Uh, do I seem artsy to you? 
You don't seem very artsy. No. I took very some logical. art classes. Very logical. And for I'm not very artsy either. I'm not not a very good artist, but they were fun to take. I like taking yeah, the art I guess. classes. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you want to run through quick some ones? Now, nah, let's do some that we hate. Hated chemistry. Chemistry sucks. I'm terrible at science, and so yeah. I did so bad in the science classes. Chemistry, I think, was my lowest like grade I ever got in a class. That was uh -huh. high school. I got like a C or something in it. So I didn't mm -hmm. fail, but it was terrible. Yeah, chemistry, no fun. I didn't like biology at all, as I mm. mentioned before. Anything with English, grammar, whatever you call it. I didn't and, mind English. Oh, I was I, okay that was with probably writing my the papers like, What stuff. is a gerund? I don't want I don't care. A gerund? gerund. Yeah. What kind of English were you taking? Exactly, exactly. And uh, another one I hated, anything with math, even though, ironically, I feel like that's a place where I have some natural ability. But I hated anything with numbers. I was okay with math. I didn't like it. I would say ranking wise, science least favorite, followed by math, and then history and English. I was cool with. History's I was cool fine. With them. Yeah, anything history. I didn't. I feel like I didn't like it at the time, but now I'm more into it. Oh, well, there's choice champions yet again. I somehow managed to win, even though we when, received almost no votes. When we equal things out, after, uh, it looks like I've won. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Hinge, the dating app. You still, uh, you been banned from there yet? I'm not banned on Hinge. Not no. banned on Hinge. Uh, Hinge as far is just, as I know. As yeah, far as I know. The last time you checked. Hinge has just put out, they've updated their list of the most successful prompts in starting a conversation, right? Because they have all these these options for you that help you fill out a profile, basically, right? Uh, to kind of get your mm. get a conversation jump started. Yeah, they have like on your profile, mm -hmm. it'll say like your little prompt. It'll be like, if you know me, you know why. Dot dot dot. Right. And then you fill it in. And so I have here their top. The list is it's 25. We're obviously not going to go through all 25, but we'll go through the top of the list of the prompts that most most often lead to a conversation where somebody will chat based off of that prompt. Oh, so you need these. You need these on your profile. These are the ones that lead to giving people a picture, I guess, painting a picture of you that intrigues people and, I guess, paint you in a positive light. So a few before we actually go into what the prompts are, uh, some tips are no one-word answers. That is probably the top thing that even with these, you could you could answer some of these with one answer, one word, but it's need, too boring. Yeah. You're you not giving to, me enough. You need some full sentences here. So the number one prompt on hinge that led to the most conversations is the way to win me over is dot dot dot. Fill in the blank. What's the way to win you over? The way to win me over? Yeah. If you're a Browns fan. Okay. If you're a Buckeyes fan. Uh-huh. If you know how to cook, go on. Oh, you want me to keep listening? Is there more things? I mean, there's tons of ways to win there's me lots over. Of Browns if you're fans really who nice, can cook. if you're a sweetheart, uh huh. If you're super cute. All right, I bet you that would get you a lot of conversations started off of that. The way to win uh, me over, yeah. be really cute. Yeah, <laughs> you won. Uh -huh. Maybe that one's not for you. <laughs> how about this? Number two, my simple pleasures are reading a book. That's not true for you. You never read. It's not about. It's not about always being truthful. It's about being interesting. So it what are you gonna out. say if somebody messages you and say, "Oh, I like reading books too. What are your faves?" I used to read The Hunger Games. <laughs> 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 Back in my reading days. Yeah. I read a lot of books. When I used to have time for simple pleasures. Yeah, I'm just a busy guy now. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is the list from Hinge. The Prompts that led to the most conversations. Number three, I go crazy for. A little ditty. That's what you go crazy for? That's the first thing that came to that my would mind. Be, that would be intriguing. I Wouldn't would be, that be a little intriguing? Your, your interest would be piqued if you saw that on Isaiah's Dating Profile. I go sure. crazy for a little ditty. Yeah. A little uh, dance. How you like me now? Number four, together we could. Fall in love. I think... You gotta, you gotta be more creative than that. It's too aggressive, probably. Too. Yeah, that is right. Together, off the bat, we could get married, have children. Why don't you go with that? We could start a family. Yeah, start a family. <laughs> I think that wouldn't get the messages I'm looking for. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. think so. I don't think so. And number five, we'll stop here. Is 
my most irrational fear. Now, see, this is the first one for me. That I was like, I knew, I knew what I would answer. I, I have a pretty good one uh, for myself as well. Okay, what's yours? Uh, mine would be commitment. <laughs> You yeah. think that would run or no? Uh, you know what? Actually, that's, well, first of all, one word answer. True. That's a big red flag. And, but secondly, actually, I think that could work in the, you know, like a reverse psychology type way, maybe. They'd be so like, I'm going to be the one. Yeah, you know? maybe. Uh, for me, my, I actually do have an irrational fear and that is uh, hair, particularly wet hair. Any hair that's not attached to a person is... Something I'm afraid of. What's it going to do to me? Probably nothing. But do I want it anywhere near me? Absolutely not. These are fun to fill in. I like yeah. this. Number seven, I'm looking for. I would fill that in women. <laughs> Good answer. See, that's I'm doing no, it right. Number one answer. <laughs> you won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Isaiah, are you, you're not much of a gamer, are you? I like to think that I play. Vid- I used to play video games more, uh-huh. but I'm not a gamer in the way that a lot of people are. I was more of like a Madden guy, played 2K. Uh-huh. Uh, I used to play all the time, though. I, think, I don't play as much anymore. Yeah, my gaming days peaked probably like at the end of high school. That was probably it, right? Yeah, for me, it was college. Like when I was in like the end of high school. Into college, that's when I was playing the majority of my video games. I would play every day, like all night. Well, I have here a list. The top rated game, basically according to GameRankings.com, the top rated game they have for every single year, basically of our lifetimes. It's going back to 1996, we can find out by year. And so... 96? Yeah. So we've got 20 years of games to that's, go through uh, here. That's right. Yeah, over uh, over 20 years, right? So 27. So why don't you just go ahead and pick a year. What was your big gaming year, would you say? Uh, for me, it would have been, I don't know, 2017? 2017, the top-rated game, Super Mario Odyssey for the Switch. Oh, for the, for the Switch? Yeah. That must be when the Switch was getting real big, It probably huh? is. Probably is when uh, the Switch hit its, hit its was first released. So that's a, that's a good choice. I have seen this game though. before. I've never played it. Do you even have a Switch? I do not have a Switch, no. Yeah. Neither, no Switch for me. Neither do I. So, yeah, I'm missing out on all of these Switch games. Uh, okay, give me another year. Let's do... How about the year I was born? Uh-huh. 1998. 1998, eh? 1998 was, it seems here, nope, that's uh, 97, uh, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. The Legend of Zelda, what a yeah. what an OG game. Uh, the Legend of Zelda on this list, well represented here. That one was for the Nintendo 64, and then you see uh, Zelda come up again a few other times. Um, I also have it here for 2003. Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker for GameCube. Oh. Uh, it's also on here a few other times. So, okay, give me another one. What about uh, 2000? Seemed like a good year. The year 2000, the new millennium. Well, I'll tell you that in 2000, the top game of the year was, oh, this is good, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Isn't it wild that everybody knows who Tony Hawk is? Yeah. Like, he's a no, pro skater. And who cares about skateboarding? Nobody. Nobody has ever cared about skateboarding. Yeah. But everyone knows who the heck Tony Hawk is. When my children ask me about, like, they never will. But yeah. whenever Tony Hawk <laughs> comes up in conversation, I'm going yeah. to like, be like, why was he so famous? I'm going to be like, I don't even know. I don't even know why he was so famous. Because he was the best skateboarder? Yeah. Like, nowadays. Who's the best skateboarder? Today. Who is the best? Like, in every, other, a- every other, like, sport... If there's ever been someone that people have known, uh-huh. like has been a household name, there's someone we know now, except for like skateboarding. Yeah. Let me name ask you this. one more. I can't even name no, one more skateboarder. I can't do it. But um, everyone knows Tony Hawk. He's a household name for everyone. Everyone knows who he is. What about, think about this. Do you, what would be the equivalent if there's like a, a new, a new skateboarding? What would it be? You know what I mean? Skateboarding was huge at that time. That's yep. why Tony Hawk had a video game that was so popular. Would it be pickleball? It might be pickleball. Are we going to find out who the most famous pickleballer is and he's going to have a game named after him? Possibly. It's wild. Yeah. I was thinking about this the other day. It's just crazy that, like, it's not even like he's kind of a household name. Like, everyone listening yeah. knows who the heck Tony Hawk is. And when was the last he's time like he even LeBron. skateboarded? He's like the equivalent of, when I say LeBron, everyone knows LeBron. Everyone knows Tony Hawk. How is that even possible? 
Yeah. He's a skateboarder. No hate to him. There's Tony a lot Hawk's of people, awesome. I mean, in more popular sports you couldn't name that were better. You know, like, yeah. that were real good at their sport in around that same time, late 90s. And uh, nobody remembers them. But Tony Hawk, he stood the test of time right, somehow. Let's, let's He's also do, just got a cool name. Yeah, he does have a cool name. All right, let's do one more. All right. How about, like, uh, 2008? 2008. Grand Theft Auto. Four. Talk about a wild game. How could you you knew Grand Theft Auto would be on the list? Isn't that crazy that that's it's, that that was so huge? It's just a game about running around in the free world, just beating people up. <laughs> yeah. You just heard the worst of the worst. We'd give you the best of the best, but we'd have to find that. As soon as we do, you'll be the first to know.